welcome to my youtube channel tonight's topic is cervical sympathetic trunk you can see this is this yellow thing is the cervical sympathetic trunk it runs almost vertically and from the base of the skull you can see that here is the c1 vertebra and above it is the skull the base of the skull and it extends below to the neck of the first rib neck you have to remember because it is frequently asking uh, mcqs and you can see that um here uh, that the cervical sympathetic trunk contains three ganglions this is superior cervical ganglion you can see that it is the largest of three superior cervical ganglion and you can see here the middle cervical ganglion and you can see here it is the inferior cervical ganglion okay now you can see uh, that this is uh, this below this is the thorax and this is the first thoracic sympathetic ganglion okay um, often that inferior cervical ganglion and the first thoracic sympathetic ganglion uh, is fused and when fused it is called cervical uh, cervical thoracic ganglion or uh, we can say stellate ganglion okay so uh, let's look about the relationships of the cervical sympathetic trunk and i need a cross section of the neck at the le level of c7 so let's get it here is it and you can you can see that this is the uh, skin okay uh, and below it is the beneath it is the uh, superficial fascia with the you know that this is the platysma and quickly let's look that this is uh, what this is the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius and they are enclosed by the existing layer of the deep cervical fascia and you can see that this is sternohyoid, sternothyroid and homohyoid muscles and this is uh, the thyroid, esophagus and trachea they are enclosed by the pretracheal layer and you can see that here is the carotid sheath uh, and this is the other fascia have you heard about it okay this is the carotid sheath and you can see that this is the internal jugular vein and this is the common carotid artery but when you're going upward it becomes internal carotid artery Con the external carotid artery leaves the carotid sheath and you can see here uh, the nerve is the vagus nerve and you can see here the phrenic nerve uh, and this is the what the prevertebral fascia uh, you can see that this is here here is the sympathetic trunk hmm? your friend okay so we can see in this picture that sympathetic trunk is posterior to the pre vertebral layer but in some books it says that it is embedded in deep fascia between the carotid sheath and the pre vertebral layer of deep fascia however keep it in mind and i use this picture to tell you about 
uh, the relationships okay so you can see this is anterior to the longest coli muscle okay longest coli muscle and there is also another muscle with the longest coli it is the longest capitis muscle and this is the vertebra um, both of the that muscles are on the root of the transverse process of the vertebra okay so you can now you can see that uh, this is posterior to the common carotid artery in the lower levels but in the high higher levels it is posterior to the internal carotid artery and you can see this this is medial to the vagus nerve and uh, to get the inferior relationships i need another pi another picture and let's look inferior relationships and here is the usually uh, our sympathetic trunk and you know here is the subclavian vein subclavian artery sorry subclavian artery and here is this first branch you know that vertebral artery here is this is the left side okay the left side and this is medial side and this is lateral side uh, there's a reason why I get the left side and you know then um, the trunk is uh, the vertebral artery is medial to the trunk okay so the sympathetic trunk uh, and here we go and there it's next branch you know that costo cervical trunk can you remember the branches here is the dorsal scapular artery and suprascapular artery as i remember and you get this branch what is this inferior thyroid artery okay so inferior thyroid artery goes like this it means that sympathetic cervical sympathetic trunk is crossed by the inferior thyroid artery posteriorly remember it it also asking mcqs okay so the reason why I get the left side is uh, you can see the thoracic duct okay the thoracic duct come like this okay this is the thoracic duct and um, it crosses crosses the sympathetic chain anteriorly okay and goes to drain via here uh, you can see that this is the subclavian vein and here it comes the internal jugular vein and you can see the thoracic duct drains into here okay mm, okay now this is the inferior relationship so let's go to another thing I before I we go to it I think it is better you to uh, know about what is the gray ramus and what is the um, white ramus okay so this you can see this is a, a cross section of uh, the spinal cord and this is uh, gray matter white matter you can see that this is dorsal root and ventral root uh -huh. so in the lateral horn of the gray matter here you can uh, the preganglionic fibers of this of a ganglion of the sympathetic trunk here is the uh, a typical sympathetic ganglion not the cervical this is for your uh, better understand i'm going to uh, give an idea about white ramus uh, in the lateral horn uh, the preganglionic fibers uh, from the lateral horn of the gray matter comes from like this and come to the white ramus you can see that this this is the white ramus okay so we got we write it white ramus okay and this is the gray ramus here you can see that this is the gray ramus there are two parts okay and 
that I told that the preganglionic fibers come like this and synapse within the ganglion and give post ganglionic fibers and in a typical uh, typical ganglion it goes to the dorsal ramus as so well as the ventral ramus okay so this is the pathway the white from the white ramus we get preganglionic fibers and from the left ramus we get the gray from the gray ramus we get the post ganglionic fibers okay so let's go to our topic again and so here you get the thoracic and uh, cervical ganglion okay so why i include this is let's see that this this is a preganglionic fiber at this cervical um, sympathetic trunk okay and this is the post ganglionic fiber so let's follow this to the back go down go down and go down here it's going to the thoracic part no you can see go like this and going to this and here okay so you see that the preganglionic fibers of the cervical sympathetic trunk comes from the thoracic segment okay so it means that the cervical sympathetic ganglia receives preganglionic fibers through the white rami communicants of the upper thoracic ventral rami which ascends in the trunk and reach the ganglia okay let's look about the branches of the cervical sympathetic trunk so it's easy to remember the branches of the cervical sympathetic trunk by remembering the ways the branches are given so first uh, they give branches to cranial nerves and they give branches to the cervical nerves uh, by the gray rami the gray rami communicates to the ventral rami of the cervical nerves and they form plexuses around the branches of the major arteries so let's look about uh, the branches given to the cranial nerves the branches given to the cranial nerves the superior uh, ganglion gives the branches to the cranial nerves it is only ganglion that gives branches to the cranial nerves and here uh, it gives branches to the 12th cranial nerve and 10th cranial nerve and 9th cranial nerve okay now let's see about the cervical nerves they give gary my communicants to the uh, cervical nerves superficial superior ganglion gives uh, branches to the upper four ventral rami and middle gives to the five and six cervical nerves and inferior gives to the seven and eight cervical nerves actually cervical nerves okay then let's talk about the plexuses um, this is the continuation upward continuation of the cervical sympathetic trunk uh, it's called as internal carotid nerve uh, it forms a plexus around the internal carotid artery and another nerve external carotid nerve it forms a plexus around the external carotid artery and here another branch uh, laryngopharyngeal actually branches laryngopharyngeal branches uh, which unites with the pharyngeal branches of vagus and glossopharyngeal nerves to form the pharyngeal plexus and there's another branch uh, let's keep it and 
go to the middle ganglion and middle ganglion gives thyroid branches and it also gives the ansa subclavian uh, i i think that you saw it in the first picture uh, here is the ansa subclavia um, it connects the middle and inferior cervical ganglia uh, it uh, crosses in front of the first part of the subclavian artery and turns upward and behind it okay uh, then let's see it the fine filaments from the answer subclavia uh, forms subclavian plexus on the subclavian artery and the larger filaments forms vertebral plexus around the vertebral artery okay then uh, there are cardiac branches that gives uh, to the cardiac plexus so let me get uh, so here this superior ganglion gives superior card cervical cardiac nerve and middle gives middle ca cervical cardiac nerve and inferior gives uh, inferior cervical cardiac nerve uh, this goes to uh, on left side to superficial cardiac plexus and on right side to the deep cardiac plexus both of them goes to the deep cardiac plexus so this is the branches and all about the cervical sympathetic trunk